Welcoming to our study. I'm evangelist and teacher Joseph A. Brown. And as always, beloved, we are blessed to have you join us here at Understanding the Father's Heart Ministries. Beloved in Christ, there are some things in life that we take pleasure in. And there are some things in life that we kind of shun away from or get away from it as much as we can. And beloved, that is a discipline. You know God's Holy Spirit has the ability to discipline us as God would have us to be disciplined in order that we might walk according to the way that He desire that we walk in this earth as believers. But many times we can push away from His discipline, believing that somehow it wasn't right for us at a particular time in our life. But beloved, God's timing is always right. When He is blessing us, when He is disciplining us and correcting us, it is always for our good. And especially as born again believers in Christ. Because God disciplines those whom He loves. It's out of love, it's out of care, out of concern that God disciplines us. And we should be willing to accept it, even though it may not seem joyous at the moment. But we have to accept the correction because we know that it's going to ultimately lead us where we need to be. You know, I take um, sort of a pride when my sons come to me and say to me, Thank you, Dad, for being there for us, but also because you disciplined us. You didn't allow us just to run with any body and even when we uh, had friends you made sure that you vetted them in some way and not only were you able to discipline us in that fashion but even our own friends when they were doing things that might have been suspect they would not even allow me to be a part of it because they knew how uh, we felt about what they were participating in. So, beloved in Christ, we have to realize this, that it always somehow comes back when we shun discipline or if we don't discipline as we ought to. But I want you to know that God will discipline correctly regardless if we like it or not. So beloved, we have to learn how to accept it and know that it is leading us in the direction that will enhance our lives. Amen? So beloved, after we pray, this is what we're going to talk about. God disciplines those whom He loves. Father, we thank you, we praise you today, Lord God. We ask that you open up our understanding, Father, to the fact of what you are trying to do in our lives, Father God, and get us to a place, Father God, of knowing when you are disciplining us and when the enemy is attacking us. Sometimes, Father God, we get the two confused. We believe that the enemy is attacking us and Father, you are simply disciplining us at the particular moment. And that you are working it together for our good. Father God, may give us the wisdom and the understanding to determine the difference between the two. 
we ask in Jesus precious name glory be to the living God beloved in Christ that is so true you know I've heard believers say before when God was trying to bless them through discipline that they would quickly invoke the idea that it was the devil that was actually attacking them and truly it wasn't it was God disciplining them trying to bring them to a place that they have a better understanding of what took place in their lives. So, beloved in Christ, uh, we just pray that we all come to a greater understanding that some things that transpires in our lives is for our good, even though it may not seem like it at the moment that it is taking place. I want you to turn with me to the book of Hebrews, uh, the 12th chapter and the 6th uh, verse. We want to teach from there. We've been talking about, I think in the previous study, we talked about the fact that uh, uh, God's whippings are priceless. I think that was the last thing that we talked about. And if you don't have it, you can go on to uh, not Facebook, Facebook and also uh, on YouTube and you will find that teaching. God's whippings are priceless. And it kind of put in perspective uh, what God is trying to do in our lives when He disciplines us and how we ought to accept it and understand it. Amen. If you're there... Uh, Hebrews 12, beginning at the 6th verse. The Word of God reads this way. For whom the Lord loveth, he chastens or discipline, and scourgeth even every son he receives. So every son that God receives into the kingdom, into his plan, he disciplines them, he chastens them, and he also scourges them. And what does the word scourge really mean? It means it can be a punishment, sometimes even at the hand of enemies, and even natural disasters. Amen? God can use this because God is in control of all these things. And so God can bring forth uh, a whirlwind. God can bring forth a hurricane or a tornado in order to scourge a people or a nation. When we go back and we look at the Old Covenant, we see many times when the children of Israel walked away from God, God scourged them in some manner, in some fashion. I know many times we don't like to talk like that. We don't like to believe like that. But beloved, God did this many times against the children of Israel. And so beloved, we have to understand that God says in His Word, I change it not. I'm the same today, yesterday, and forever. The only way we know that God was scourging uh, the nation of Israel at that particular time is because the Word of God says that He was doing that. We wouldn't know it today by simply determining with our own understanding and our wisdom if it's of God or whom we, we, we try to justify, where did it come from? Amen? That's why I said we have to determine what is coming from the enemy and what also is coming from God. But always remember this, beloved. He is the God of love. Amen? Everything he does is out of love. Not out of uh, retribution, 
not of, of trying to literally destroy your confidence. Because, beloved, he wants you to have a comp confidence in him. And whatever discipline he brings to your life is, is purposeful and it's needful. And so we have to get to a place that we recognize uh, that it is. The seventh verse reads, If we endure, talking about us, his chastening or discipline, God then deals with you as sons. For what son is he whom the father does not discipline? Beloved, chasten means to inflict disciplinary or corrective punishment through purpose and for moral improvement. It is to bring us to a place of moral improvement in our lives. It's not done by simply fiat. But it's done with a purposeful intention in order to get us to a place of moral purity where God desire we all be. Beloved, God is not disciplining us for sadistic joy, but rather for our good. Amen. Let us Get this in our spirit. Let us understand this in our minds. Then, beloved, it will be much more simpler for us to determine when the enemy is attacking us and when God is disciplining us. The eighth verse reads, But if ye be without chastisement, if you go unchastised, undisciplined, where of all are partakers, then ye are bastards, in other words, illegitimate and not sons. Beloved, one without a father is lacking love, direction, and guidance. Let me say that again. One without a father is lacking loving direction, and guidance. And I know our world and our society tell us today, like one uh, sister told me uh, quite a while ago, uh, that she would be the father and the mother of her children. And I simply told her that she could not perform that task, that it was M. Possible. She could be the mother, but she could not ever be the father. And that's why in our homes today, there's so much destruction, there's so much chaos, because of the fact that what God had set in place, that a mother and a father be in the home. Now, I know there are circumstances that, that, that cannot be and that will not be uh, not due to uh, the mother's fault. But regardless, the fact remains that you can be the best mother that God has ever made, but you cannot be the father. It's impossible. And I know there are many people today who say that's not true. But my prayer is that those people that say that is of the world. And they're not born again. Because a born again believer knows what God says is true. And even though we may raise children, uh, um, to be uh, lawyers or doctors or whatever you may raise them to be without the Father 
participating in some way, that child will have something missing in their lives. Because, beloved, it's not a, success is not about getting a degree or how much money you make and all these other things. But rather, it is truly acknowledging God the Father and to walk in that understanding and that peace that God establishes in the life of his children. So, beloved in Christ, you know, I'm not looking necessarily for you to uh, say that you agree with me. With me. Uh, I just want you to agree with God. Amen? And we have to agree with what God's Word says and why God does things the way He does. You know, because we can't go by what we feel. Uh, I feel like I can do it. I feel like I can get the job done. It doesn't matter. There is something greater at work there that you cannot see that's happening in the spirit realm that only God can see because God is the father of the spirits, not of the flesh. He's God of the spirits. He knows what happens in the spirit when we can't even imagine what is taking place in the spirit realm even right now. So, beloved, let's not declare ourselves as wise as God just because we can do a little thing by ourselves. We have to recognize that we need God and we need His discipline and direction in every facet of our lives. The ninth verse reads, Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us and we gave them reverence or respect shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the father of spirits and live you see beloved that's what i'm talking about god is the father of spirits and because he's the father of spirits he is working in areas that we can only imagine that he is doing in the earth. And that's why we can't just go on the fact, well, I can do it and I can do it on my own and I don't need any discipline. I don't need that father anywhere around at all. Well, then, beloved, then you are circumspected the Word of God. You are simply saying the Word of God, yes, that is man's opinion, uh, but I know better. Well, beloved, I can promise you, you do not know better. You might think you know better, but you do not know better. God knows much more than you will ever attain to know. He knows your present, He knows your past, and he also know your future. And beloved, if we don't get that right, then we are going to be out of step with Almighty God. And as the Word says, we have been disciplined by the fathers of our flesh who corrected us, and we respect them. Just as I told you, my sons respect me because of the discipline that was in their lives. But, beloved, my prayer above all is that they respect God, the one who can give eternal life, much more than they could ever respect me. Amen? Beloved, because the chastening that I done was not only just for them to be uh, directed right in their lives, which I did want it, that. But, beloved, as, you, as we read God's Word, you'll see that the disciplining that the Father do in this earth 
is for their own good too. I want you to be quiet. Why? Because I don't want to hear you talking. I, I, I want you to go to your room. Why? Because I don't want you in the same room with me. Uh, or whatever it might be. But it's to convenient me. But it also leads into them prospering in their lives. Glory be to the living God. Look what the word of God says, beloved. Uh, for they verily for a few days chasten us after their own pleasure. Just what I was talking about. But he who is God for our profit that we might be partakers of his holiness. That's why God disciplines us, so that we might be partakers of his holiness. Beloved, I respect my dad highly. Not because he was one who was high in position in society. He, was, he worked at a lumber company. But I respect him because of his honesty, his candor about life. And that's why I desire to emulate him and then pass it on to my own sons so that they can pass it on. Beloved, that is a great gain for me. But I know within some of the discipline that my own uh, dad uh, did toward us was for his own personal benefit as well as my mother's benefit. But beloved, in the long run, it helped us to keep us disciplined and headed in uh, the right uh, direction. Everything God does is for our profit only. Our parents, as I said, did it for their own prof profit sometimes. So that we wouldn't be a burden to them in the future. That's why a parent does their very best to get you educated. <laughs> to get you through school. And to discipline you in that way. Because, beloved, they don't want you have to coming back to them and have to live with them and not be able to take care of yourself. When they get of a certain age, they want you then to be a blessing to them. The parrot does. And that's why we as children ought to be cognizant of that fact. That after we have gained, we should be willing to put in the coffers and the prosperity of our own parents. Not constantly taken from them. And you see so often these days, beloved, children who are in their 30s and 40s and 50s still at their father's and mother asking them to bless them. Beloved, that is out of place. That is out of place. There was some discipline that was not performed somewhere in those children's lives. That they will still be beckoning their parents to support them. I knew and was aware that my sons had arrived a long time ago. I remember when my older son saw that we were in need of a car and allowed us to be able to use his car, even though he lived in Houston. He found a way, but he, he, he allowed us to use his car for months until we could get our car back on the road. Beloved, that's what I'm talking about. 
or my sons saying to myself and Linda, I want you all to have a vacation every year. We're going to give you y'all a vacation every year, whether y'all want to go. Beloved, that's a blessing. That's a blessing from Almighty God. But you know, when I was disciplining them at the time in their youth, you know, I thought I was washing all that away. Even the possibility that they would want to get away from that discipline so quickly that they would never even look back. But beloved, it didn't work that way. It did just the opposite. It allowed them to look back and to cherish the discipline that they had gotten. So beloved in Christ, it is always doing God's will that works for our future good. The 11th verse says, Now, no chastening in the present seems to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised or trained thereby. When you allow yourself to be trained by the discipline of God that comes in your life, beloved, then and only then will you begin to see the fruit thereof. It may be in the future, but beloved, if the seeds have been sown, they will bring forth fruit and blessings each and every time. Sometimes it's difficult to be the one that discipline, but beloved in Christ, in the end, it is always worthwhile. God knows, knows it. God does it. So, beloved, should we also. Amen. Beloved in Christ, we pray that the Lord has opened your understanding to His Word. And you know that you can contact us at Evangelist Joseph A. Brown, Post Office Box, 186 Youngsville, Louisiana. And beloved in Christ, know this, that God loves you, that He cares about you. He has proven it by sending His only begotten Son to the cross. And if you don't know Him from the pardon of your sins, you need to right now ask Him to come into your life and to change you and continue to join us in our studies on Sundays and beloved every day of the week where we put out a video usually from Monday through Saturday they're only uh, three minutes and 30 seconds long beloved let that be the beginning of your day to sit back and listen to what God is speaking into the earth today and in your life. May the Father open your heart to His understanding in the name of Yeshua, Jesus the Christ.